All right, so moving on with it, we already did the first page of this foldable. So we said uh, there's going to be actually 11 functions that we're going to talk about in all. And so here the first function was the power function. And we said any function with a number exponent is your power function. So any number. So when we go through this part, there's a couple of these that could be considered a power function. So let's go ahead and just start going through them and we kind of see which ones are which. And at the very end, we're going to actually talk about those and actually show you which ones are which, which ones are power functions. All right. So with this, on this video, we're going to talk about the first five after power function. And then on the sec next video, we're going to talk about the next five for that. So the first five we're going to start off with is talking about the constant function. Constant. All right. So the constant function. So whenever somebody says that they're somebody's consistently doing this or constantly doing this, or if your your brother and sister is constantly like um, getting your nerves, they they just they just they're bothering you, man. It's like they're irking you. They're just messing with you. They're constantly messing with you and constantly trying to get on your nerves, trying to mess you, like make you mad or something. So if they're constant, that means that they're always doing it. They don't they don't change. They don't go up. They don't go down. Like you know. Nah, I won't say that one, say that one. Uh, so like constant just means that they go up, they, they don't go up, they don't go down. Like when it comes to a sports team or something of that sort, like they're consistently winning. They're constantly going to like the finals or going into the mate, like the, um, the, um, win the championships and all the good stuff. So with this, the constant function, it's a constant flat function that doesn't go up, doesn't go down. It stays flat there. It doesn't go, doesn't go anywhere. So with it, I'm going to give you two examples of it. So our first one here, I'm going to do this in green. I'm going to do a line right here. And we're going to add arrows to both sides of it. And you remember back from the um, domain and range that we talked about, whenever we have arrows, that means that we're going to deal with, um, in, uh, sorry, infinities. Wow, I just messed that up. So we're talking about infinities. So whenever we see an arrow, it means infinity when it comes to our domain and range in, um, in the notation part. So with this, we're going to go ahead and label this. This is f of x equals 2. Now with this one, we're not going to do y equals because y equals an actual equation. We're talking about a function. And with this, we're going to go ahead and label this by doing tick marks and everything. So actually, we know that this is 2 and not just some random thing we put on the graph. Make sure whenever we do parent graph quizzes and all the good stuff that you label this out correctly. Because if you don't label it out, I don't know what you just did. You just threw some number up there. We don't just throw numbers. We actually look at it and make sure we are in the right spot for it. So label, 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 label. Graphs, label. So that's one thing. But you also can have another type of graph here. Let's say we're going to do a negative one. Let's do down here. Negative. Let's say this is like negative 4. And so here we're going to get, again, put these tick marks on here so we know that's negative 4. Right, so we have negative 4 there. And when it comes to your parent graph quiz, you don't have to put them both down. You can just do 2 or 1 or 5 or whatever you want to do. You can do a negative, but you do not have to do both of them. So when we deal with our domain here, we're going to deal with domain and range. We're only going to deal with one graph, and I can do with both of them. But also before we do domain and range, the function for a constant, the what the function looks like for a constant function is f of x equals, and this time I'm going to put a c right here. So f of x equals c. c meaning constant. So whatever number that is, whether it's 2, whether it's negative 4, whether it's 100, whether it's negative 1,000, whatever, that's what c is. Your constant. It doesn't go up, doesn't go down. It stays flat the whole way through. All right, so now dealing with our domain and range here. We're going from left to right, left to right. And we said whenever we see arrows again, that means infinity. And so here, this arrow's on this side. We're going from left to right for domain, from left to right. If you have the arrow here, that means the arrow's going on forever and ever and ever. So that means we're dealing with negative infinity on this side. Negative infinity. All right, and then on the other side, we keep going from left and going all the way to right. And so here, there's an arrow. So that means again, that means an infinity. And on this side, the infinity is positive. So we go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And every time we have infinity, we put parentheses. So about that also for an interval notation. 
Okay, so that's our domain. Now looking at our range. Again, we're not going to take a look at this graph here as part of it. We're only going to deal with just the green one. So we know range goes from the bottom and goes to the top and see where the graph exists or what a graph is. So if we start here at the bottom, and again, don't worry about that black line. That's not there. We're not using that one. We're going to go all the way up until we find the graph here. And it stop it's at 2. But with the graph, is there anything above it? Nah. Is there anything below that graph? And again, not looking at that part. Anything below the graph? Nah. So that means when it comes to a constant function, the graph is only at this line right here. And that is 2. So if we're looking at this one down here, the graph will only be at negative 4. And so with this, no matter what number that is, your range is always going to be a number, not in a notation, just a number. And so here, I'm going to put this behind it, the letter C, because whatever the constant is, whatever that constant is, constant function, whatever that number is, that's what the C is going to be. That's what the range is going to be. Cool. All right. So let's go to quadratic. That's the second function here. Quadratic. And the function here, hopefully everybody remembers this one. I hope, I hope. It's x to some power. And it's to the second power. And does anybody remember what that, what the name of that graph is other than quadratic function? Anybody remember what the graph looks like? Or not what it looks like, but what the name of that graph is? So I think some people are probably saying it. Some people are like, I don't remember nothing. Some people are saying parabola, which is correct. If you said parabola, something's wrong with you. We don't say parabolas. We say parabolas. It is a parabola. And with this one, um, parabola, we're going to put a, a point right here at zero, zero. And we have a parabola going on. Yay! A U-shaped graph, the parabola. Now with it, even though the graph is coming and curving up like this, and it's curving up like this, we still have arrows on both ends of the graph. Both. So, we have arrows on both ends of the graph here on this side and that side. So when it comes to our domain for this, we have an arrow on this side, arrow on that side, and arrows mean infinity. So on this side, going from left to right, the arrow goes from negative infinity into another arrow, which is positive infinity. Okay. And now we take a look at our range. We say, okay, from range, it goes from the bottom, goes up to the top. And here, it doesn't, the graph doesn't start until we get to zero. So it starts at zero here. So going from the bottom, there's nothing here, nothing here, nothing here until we get to zero. And then from zero, we go all the way up until we get to arrows again, which means positive infinity. Booyah. And again, infinity has the parenthesis. And I see that here. Now with that, for the zero, is that an open or closed circle? And if you didn't, can't really see that that well. Bam. It is a closed circle. So since that's a closed circle, it's just a bracket or parenthesis. I'd love to give you guys time to say something because you might want to say it out loud and everything. I don't know, you might be at home just watching this and you might think that saying something out loud would be okay, but at school it's weird. I don't know. All right, so that's our second graph, quadratic. All right, third graph. We're going to call this our linear function. All right. And then a linear function is f of x equals x. And hopefully everybody remembers this graph too, because a linear function is just diagonal. So it goes through here, goes through 
goes here. So it goes up from left to right. Up from left to right. So from here to here, it's going up from left to right. And again, arrows on both sides. So going from left to right, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. So from left to right. And then again, for range, it's going from bottom to the top. And going from bottom, which is an, an arrow there, and to the top is another arrow. So negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay, cool. Not bad. We can do this. We got this. We got this. All right, so let's go to our cubic function now. Number four. And hopefully everybody remembers what a cubic function looks like. And that is something with a cube means it's x cubed. And hopefully with this one, you've seen this again before, I hope. Oh, Lord willing. We have an arrow here. The arrow going up here. We got an arrow going down here. And we have our wonderful cubic graph. And one of the things that that really irks me at times is some people try to draw cubic graphs like this. And this will not work, so don't even try it because it's going to be wrong. So some people try to do cubic graphs like this. And like, that's my cubic graph, Mr. Hall. No arrows or nothing. Or they try to do this. That's not a cubic graph. Cubic graph is nice and smooth curve here. Nice and smooth curve right here. All your curves and all your edges. So curves, nice and smooth curves, not jumbled up work, looking weird things like this. This is wrong. If you do it, it's wrong. You get, you get it wrong in a, on your quiz. So don't get mad at me then. Just know now it's going to be wrong. So with it, and nice and smooth. All your curves and all your edges. All right, so again, from here, going from left to right for our domain, domain here, from left to right. On the left side, we have an arrow. On the left side here, we get an arrow. Arrow means infinity, no matter what. Arrow means infinity. And then on the other side, we have another arrow. It means it's positive infinity. And then here again, for the range, we should be able to see that going from bottom to the top, there's another arrow and arrow. So they get infinity, positive infinity. Oh yeah. All right, so that's four of them. And then let's see. Uh, let me pull this one out too. And now we get to the fifth one. And this is where we're going to stop for this video. So for this fifth graph, we're going to talk about the square root one. Square root function. And everybody hopefully knows what a square root looks like. It's not a square, but square root. And that is the word root right there, I'm sorry. So f of x equals the square root of x. And so with this one, and one teacher actually talked about this last year, it kind of looks like the dab a little bit if you like let your mind go there and you think about that. <laughs> Looks like the dab. Something like that. Something like, something like, looks like something like the dab. So like, bam, bam. So you can't see that, sorry. Bam, something like that. Bam. So we're doing the dab there. So um, square root function, kind of looks like the dab. A little bit like that, a little bit. All right, so with that, we're going from left to right for our domain. Again, it's a closed circle here. So we're starting at zero. We have a bracket there because it's a closed circle at zero. Going from left to right, it starts at zero. And it goes on with an arrow forever. So pause infinity. All right, and then going from the bottom to top here. Again, there's nothing down here until we get to zero for the range. And then we go on forever. Again, there's an arrow here. So that means it's going to go to pause infinity. So not only does it go to the left, but it's also going up too, up at the same time. All right, so that's the first five. And so now we're going to go ahead and go to the next five and on the next video. And then we'll be done with our functions. Jesus is a friend of mine.